things that fascinate people more than anything else are probably these two types of fossils. These here are echinoderms and these are two little specimens of a, of a heart urchin called Lavinia. But it's perhaps these that people are most excited and enthusiastic about because these were once extremely common in the rocks around this area. What happened was they were worn out of the rocks and because they're made of phosphate they are a lot tougher than the other components of the rock so they were in fact preserved and the beds became more and more dominated by these as the other substances were slowly worn and weathered away. We get a thing that's called a hard ground where these are abundant in other words they are phosphatic they are much harder than virtually everything else except for the, the silica that we've seen earlier on. But these are shark's teeth and they were from a large animal probably significantly bigger than a white pointer that we would have today. The last thing you would want to have done if you were living here five and a half million years ago would have been to have gone for a swim out there. A lot of the shark's teeth around here have a rather unusual covering on them. They're pink and this pink material is in fact the, the holdfast or the remains of a coralline algae that grew over them. And this testifies too to the fact that they were on the seafloor for a very long period of time. It gives me great pleasure to introduce Marior, the president of the Bayside Earth Sciences Society. Murray has been working down here at this beach off and on for maybe 30 years and has found some extraordinary fossils and perhaps some of the most remarkable ones he's got with us here at the present time. Murray. This is a, a tooth of a whale. Um, imagine if we had an orca, the tooth of an orca or killer whale would be about this long. The total length of the tooth of an orca. So this was significantly bigger than an orca and probably came from a, a sperm whale. So it was an animal that was carnivorous. The fact that the, the actual tooth itself is shaped like this means that it was a flesh-eating animal. So what did it eat? Well, it may have eaten sharks, it may have eaten squid, it may have even eaten other whales. But this is one of the largest teeth that's ever been found in any fossil bed in Australia. Murray found it and it's from these at Ricketts Point. The other things that are important here are these and this is a, a section of a, a whale jawbone, um, the lower jawbone of a whale and it would have been much longer than this. We can see the beautiful graceful curve of the bone here. Um, still in the, in the central part here these lumps or nodules of rock haven't been removed but it's quite nice to see them in their place. So this would have been a, a whale, a baleen whale, that would have perhaps been significantly smaller than many of the modern blue whales and things but nonetheless would have been a reasonable size. So we have the marsupials, we have the whales, we have turtles, we have crocodiles, we have sharks living in the water as well as a myriad group of invertebrates. And on the land we have our trees and our marsupials, we have penguins and we even have birds, our flying birds that is. All have contributed to the rocks that we currently find around Beaumaris and all are represented by the excellent fossil locations that are now exposed here. Over here, Murray, this, this one's kind of interesting because it represents it's a cast of, of um, some bivalve. And in a way, it's, it's not so impressive because it's just the imprint. It's like you took a piece of Play-Doh and pushed it against a, a shell and that's the remains of it. But the one you found here, this is quite, quite impressive. Hmm. Um, you've interpreted this as a... This is a, an intervertebral disc of a whale, um, the impression of the the vertebrae is around here 
and um, it's what happens when you slip a disc. Uh, this whale slipped its disc badly. So what, what you're really saying is that we would have had a, a whale out there with a very, very sore back at one stage. An extremely sore back, um, needing some uh, treatment. Of course, what probably happened was the whale died. The disc was preferentially mineralised and eventually was preserved. Yeah. But there are whale vertebrae that are exposed in the cliff face, or they have been mm. exposed in the cliff face around Ricketts Point. And uh, this is just perhaps the remains of some of the more extensive whale fossils that we know exist. That's because what we're looking at here is a shell with both valves present. Yeah, yeah. And that means that it hasn't been transported very far. So it was living in a very quiet and gentle environment. The other thing is this was living beneath the surface, so it was, um, when it was alive, it was, it was down below the sand. Interesting thing, the other day I found a, a brachiopod where the top shell was partially destroyed, but it was hinged open, ah. and you can see the, all the hinging mechanism there, and I've put it in with my other brachiopods, which I think I've now got, I, I'm identifying five to six different shaped Brachiopods, like I mean, what, what's good a grief. really a lamp shell. Uh, lamp shell. Yeah. Um, brachiopod. Um, they're they're in their own phylum. Yeah. Yeah, he wants more. What's what's really interesting? There is one shell that's here that is quite spectacular, and that is a thing called um, a Neotrigonia. And Murray knows that that I've always been fascinated by Neotrigonia mm. because they are a group of bivalves that we thought were extinct, and uh, one. Um, was found on a fishing boat, alive, in Bass Strait um, about 10 years ago. And uh, this is probably a Neotrigonia. And uh, what was really amazing was the guy was, one of the guys who saw it was an interested person, in other words, somebody who was fascinated by shells. And he recognized it as a Trigonia and he leaped towards it but they have the ability to move. In other words, the two valves snapped and it plopped over the side. So they came back later on, obviously some, some time later, and found some living ones. But uh, that was a very important find. These things were thought to have died out. And uh, to find a living one was quite spectacular. The other interesting thing about this um, gertite is that um, this tooth was encrusted in gertite, which oh, yeah. means it was in a layer that uh, wasn't expected, um, it, it possibly in one of the upper layers in the in the sandstone. Um, so I've I've got a couple of pieces which I took back off the museum. I said I gave you the tooth, but I haven't given you all the gertite. <laughs> so I'd, and I've got one piece which actually wraps around and fits onto the tooth. Yeah. But um, uh, yeah, so apart from bringing that animal around the world, it's brought it up the cliff face. And also, the vertebrae are quite long at the cliff face. They're not near the base. Right, OK, yeah. So yeah. the whales were, maybe some of these larger ones, were a later. That's going to be important when the EES comes to bear, because they're saying that that cliff is, that's just rubbish. There's nothing important in there. Mm, well, it certainly is very important, yeah. Yeah, I think so, yeah.